All right, so I've talked about the problem, and we talked about the past, how securities came about, what it was like when they first were created, while they first started trading. We talked about the present, how the current ledgers work. If you haven't already, please watch the previous video to this because it talks about the settlement ledgers. It is a complex topic, but it's interesting because it is counterintuitive. But if you look at how the ledgers work, uh, that is interesting, or maybe not interesting, maybe it's boring as heck, but it is uh, maybe counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. So how can you solve this? Well. Uh, you can solve it using the same kind of model like Bitcoin does. We, we, we who are in crypto know how this can work because we've seen it work. We've seen how crypto trades. We've seen how Bitcoin trades. Bitcoin moves around. And when I say trade, I don't mean on exchanges. I mean from exchanges, from people around the world. We see how Bitcoin moves and how the ledger works. And that works in a way that nothing else works like that. Uh, and and not, nothing else before Bitcoin ever worked like that. That's like I said, like, my, my, uh, you know, Mark Capellas and, and Mt. Gox created something uh, you know, innovative. There was very few other than a couple other exchanges. So anyway, this diagram is from Bitcoin, a Bitcoin presentation, and it's very similar. Now, it's important to remember that the security systems, these systems like DTCC and Euroclear, are already distributed in, in a way. They are not totally centralized. They are distributed systems that rely on a trusted third party. They're not decentralized, but they can be decentralized, or there's ways that this will work in a hybrid. These things have to trade with each other. How would that work? Well, if things can trade like Bitcoin, that solves a lot of problems. And here's an illustration of how to do that. I made a demo security. You can look up the video on it using Open Dime, which is it holds Bitcoin and a pen, a piece of paper. You can make a very simple agreement. Even a ver verbal agreement is a security because it is a, it is legally enforceable. And certainly if you made a verbal agreement and started asking for a bunch of money, that would be most likely subject to securities laws. So when in doubt, it's a security. And if you go out like I did in this video and say, this is definitely a security because it's worth money and it represents shares, well, that's definitely a security. Now, what, I, what you'll notice is that it is not an offering. Do not do this and go try to raise money. The only purpose of doing this is for a demo. If I, the moment I took this and said, okay, now give me shares, well, then I've got to be under an exemption. So that's a difference. Please don't raise money. And even doing something like this, that's a demo, be careful, particularly if you get into airdrops or exchanging something like money or try and get cute or clever with it. Do not do that. Uh, do not exchange something or try and make money from something like this unless you are very familiar with these rules and look through it. If you're asking for money, generally it is a security under U.S. law. That's okay. That's actually okay. I think it's been neglected. Um, people trying to get around the law. The laws exist. They're, they've been around for 85 years. They're not going to change. Just comply with them. If you comply with them, it's in many cases not that hard, particularly for smaller and simpler offerings. If you want to raise a billion dollars from 10,000 people, that's hard. But if you want to raise under a million, there are a few ways that you may be able to do that in a pretty easy and compliant way. Talk to your lawyers. This has been done in more serious, I shouldn't say more serious, that my effort was serious, it was a real security, although it wasn't offered. This has been done in more large scale offerings in 2015, Overstock uh, offered to, uh, or announced that it would use, uh, it would issue a real security using uh, counterparty, which is something that uh, enables uh, Bitcoin to take on a property that is sort of like an ERC-20 token, a token that, that can trade on Bitcoin using the Bitcoin layer. That is a very interesting, uh, it was the first uh, crypto security to be done on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, very interesting. There's a, There are a lot of problems with this. There's some challenges to solve. It is interesting. It is new. Even blockchain security in itself and how they interact with each other is pretty new technology. Bitcoin is further along, but for this whole thing to work, it'll have to act, interact with other chains. It'll have to have probably uh, assets on its own chain. There's going to be uh, inter certainly interacting as money for things that trade. There's issues of hack, of loss, of scalability. There's, uh, you know, it's a bearer asset. Uh, you're going to need some kind of uh, system. A lot of people ask, what happens if you lose it? Do you lose your Do you lose your shares if you lose your keys? Well, uh, that depends on the issuer. The issuers are going to have terms. Say, if you lose your shares, you know, you may have a very cypherpunky issuer or a very kind of independent. You're on your own issuer that says, "Hey, not not your keys, not your shares. You lose them, you lost it. You lost all rights. The sh the the keys are the shares. Period." And you may have a more establishment issuer. Certainly, Goldman Sachs is not going to do that. Go, and that's fine. They exist in the world. There's a market for them in the world. And they may say, hey, yeah, we don't want that to happen. We're going to use something. And there's a lot of tools. There's companies like NetKey and others that are working on identity. Maybe they tag something on there and say, okay, this is Bruce's token. 
and as long as it moves around this thing moves maybe i can move it off or take it back on identity whatever and that somehow uh you know makes it so that i could have insurance on it or something like that there's going to be things like that that need to be solved for bearer assets uh won't won't work great um uh, if, if everybody's holding them. And that's fine. That's fine. They're still way, way, way better. Even if you end up with a uh, hundred parties that and act, serve like Zappo and Coinbase and act as centralized repositories for a big chunk of the world's wealth, that's way, 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 way better than it is now, especially if people have the right to take that money out like they do now with Coinbase. So there, there is a lot of uh, interesting things about this that are going to have to be solved i don't think i have any of the or all of the answers i just think that it it this technology can potentially serve as a way to uh, solve this need and that's something that should be looked at and considered it, we've seen a lot of use cases already and there's also writing on the wall because a lot of companies and others have announced that they're going down this route so certainly something that looks like it can be done the technology definitely is proven i believe absolutely you can move a security around in a better way that's provable and testable and i don't know anybody who would argue otherwise who would argue that a counterparty token is not as efficient for example, as a paper share or a, or the kind of digital shares that are traded by Euroclear. It, 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 it's just better. You can move a digital asset, a counterparty asset, you can move all over the world. And that's a big deal. That's something that you could never do before. And it's also more practical for smaller businesses that, would, that wouldn't be able to have a, a ledger, wouldn't want to manage a ledger. Managing a ledger is hard. But if you let a blockchain manager a ledger for you, that's sort of the crux of why this makes sense. So, so it's worth looking at from a very different angle about cryptocurrency and looking at how this makes sense in, as relative to the old ledgers that the old world had, because this, this is a big improvement. There's still a lot of problems to be solved, and there's a lot of other interesting things that could happen in the future.